Hi, Madman here. Today we're going to learn how to make a paddle uh, that you can use in a breakout game or a pong game using the physics engine in Corona SDK. Uh, specifically, we're going to use um, a piston joint. So you're going to learn how to use a piston joint in Corona SDK. So um, you can see I've got one working here. I've got this floor and I've, I've got this uh, paddle. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, open up a blank project. And I've already got the, uh, the main.lua file open here. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do, since we're going to be using the physics library, is we need to require the physics library. And of course, we'll also need to start physics. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up uh, two display objects. They're both going to be rectangles. The floor is going to be a rectangle that spans the uh, bottom, the length of the, the device, and it goes along the bottom of the screen. And of course, the uh, paddle itself, which is going to be somewhat shorter, and it's going to uh, hover above the, the floor. Oh, I don't know how many pixels, uh, maybe about 50 pixels or so. So um, let's go ahead and start by adding in the paddle. I'm going to use the display.newrect command, and we're going to first place it on the screen. Uh, here are the coordinates. I'm going to center it on the x-axis. And we're going to put it down about 90% of the way down from the screen. Uh, and the next two arguments are going to be the size, the uh, width, and the, uh, the height of the paddle. So let's see. I think we're going to make the width 100 and maybe 30 pixels wide, uh, high. So let's see what that looks like. Okay. I can live with that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in a uh, floor, also a rectangle. And we're going to place it right at the bottom of the screen, uh, centered. And uh, this floor is going to extend the width of the screen. So. And it's only going to be, gee, maybe 30 pixels. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's good. Let's go ahead and group those together. Uh, let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's maybe color the paddle orange. So. And the floor, we'll make it green. See what that looks like. Okay, good. Of course, we only have display objects on the screen right now. Um, they will not respond to any touch at this point. We haven't added any physics bodies, um, so we're going to do that. Um, we're going to do that next. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a static physics body for the floor. Um, and the reason I'm going to do that is I don't want the floor to fall off the screen. And two, I want the paddle uh, to be able to anchor itself to that floor. So I'm going to use the physics.addBody method and we're going to apply it to the floor. And we're going to supply the keyword static so that it does not respond to gravity. Um, and recall that the default gravity setting for physics uh, in a project, if, unless you overwrite it, is going to be 0, 0,9.8, which means it's going to uh, be roughly Earth-like. They say it's roughly Earth-like. Your mileage may vary. So. We'll save that and uh, we shouldn't see any difference. Um, but the next step is we're going to add 
in um, a physics body for the for the uh, uh, paddle. So let's do that next. Physics add body paddle, and we're going to make this a dynamic body. And I'm going to supply the optional uh, parameters, the table values here for density and bounce. Okay, this will make it somewhat uh, resilient. So let's go ahead and save it and see what happens. Okay, so it drops. That's fine. Uh, what we want it to do, of course, is to hover above the floor. And uh, the way we do that is we um, create a joint between the floor and the paddle. So we're going to do that next. Um, so I'm going to create um, a joint called a piston joint. You can call this variable anything you want. I'm just going to call it piston joint. And we're going to use the physics.new joint um, method. And the arguments um, that you supply for this are the two objects that you want to join. Uh, well, actually, the first argument is going to be the type of joint. In this case, we're going to use the piston joint. That has to be in quotes. And the next two arguments are going to be the two objects you want to join together. So I'm going to join the floor. Uh, actually, I'm going to join the, uh, the paddle first and then the floor. Finally, uh, not finally, but next, you're going to uh, provide the locations of the objects where you want the joint to be. So I want to set up the uh, joint to be joined at the floor X location and the Y location of the platform. Uh, not platform, the uh, paddle. Finally, you have two more arguments, and those, or actually it's one more argument. It's the uh, x and y loc, uh, the x and y axis of motion. So this, um, what this does is it, it determines which direction the uh, object will be allowed to move using that joint. So in this case, we want the the object to move on the x-axis, but not on the y-axis. So I'm going to put 1 comma 0 there and then close up the paren. Now valid values are, are values of 0, between 0 and 1. So adding 2 or 3 or 4 in there is not going to make any difference. It's not going to make sense. Uh, it won't crash on you, but you're not going to get any different behavior. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And now you'll see that this guy is, is floating. Now he's still not going to respond to any touch because I don't have a touch listener. We're going to take care of that in just a minute. Let's go ahead and create that touch listener. So I'm going to create a, a function called move, uh, move paddle. And we'll allow events to be passed. And we'll just set this up as we do a, a normal uh, touch listener. Okay, and we're going to check the phase. We're going to have um, the began phase first. And we set our focus in the began stage. That's when the finger touches the object. We set focus on it. On the object. Uh, where we've touched on the object. And we're also going to allow an, an ID of the event to be passed should we need it. Okay, we set the focus to true. And then we're going to set up a variable called moveX, and we're going to store in that variable um, event X minus the uh, paddle X. So when the paddle moves, then we're going to store whatever that value is in the moveX value. 
right here. Okay. So once once we have focus here, we're going to check for the move phase. I keep the same platform here. What I want is paddle. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the X location of the paddle to be what the event location is minus the move X location, which we set up previously. And we'll end that. And we'll end that if statement. And we'll end the function. OK. Now, again, this is just a function. We can save this. We'll save it to be sure that there are no errors, and I don't see any. Nothing's going to happen here on the screen yet because I still need the actual event listener defined. So we're going to do that next. We're going to put the event listener on the paddle. I'm going to make it a touch listener, which, as you know, will pass events. And we're going to... Uh, call the uh, move platform function. So let's go ahead and save that. And oh, we got an error. Let's find out what it is. Event, aha. Event listener cannot be nil. So let's find out why it thinks it's nil. Uh, oh, I called it move paddle. And that's exactly what I should have called it down here. My bad. I'm going to save that. And we're going to relaunch, and good, no errors there. Let's click on it and see if we can drag it, and we can. Okay, so, oh, okay, so now I found a little problem there. Um, I was allowed to drag the paddle off the screen, and that's not ideal. What we want is we want this paddle to, to stay on the screen, completely on the screen, in fact, should we try to move that paddle off the screen. So what we're going to do to fix that problem is we're going to set a couple of optional properties on the piston joint itself. Um, the first one we're going to set is called is limit enabled. And we're going to set that to true. Now what that does is it um, causes the paddle, the joint between the paddle and the floor, um, it imposes a limit on that such that if you try to move the paddle, it's going to want to snap back to its original position. Now that's not exactly what we're looking to do. So we're going to broaden the limits uh, a bit with another optional parameter. Um, so piston joint, and we're going to use uh, the method set limits. And you're going to provide the set limits with two um, two arguments, the lower limit and the higher limit. So I figured out that um, the lower limit's going to be negative 110 pixels, which means that it's going to allow this guy to move over 110 pixels and only 110 pixels to the negative side or to the to the left, and then 110, which is the upper limit. So when I save that. You'll see now it butts up right against the screen, but it won't go any further than that. So that's exactly what we've been looking to do. Okay, so that's how you create a paddle using the physics library um, and utilizing the piston joint. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please check out my other videos.